This one is a 1990s uh, 3,300 square foot home. So uh, pretty pretty decent size, two story roof. So we will have to get the, uh, the drone up, but we'll be able to walk this portion of the garage roof, which is good. So even though you still get the drone up, you still put your feet on the roof where you can you can get to it because you can always find more walk in the roof. Okay, starting the inspection, but if you ever, if you're a new home inspector, don't run and just start turning things on because you'll start a fire. So make sure you always open up everything, open up the microwave. Microwave had a uh, instructions and then also it's just full of plastic. So we'll remove all this if we uh, fire up the, uh, the oven. See, this is our normal setup here. You can see that all the open up the majority of the cabinets that we can get to over here and then we set out those main tools we use get the infrared camera and moisture meter ready gas leak detector and we'll normally set up and write the report as we go uh, right doing the inspection another sign you know we just started uh, thermostat came in it was set to 75 and it's 77 degrees inside so that's always a warning sign that the HVAC's not performing to a par to the and then also, I'll still drop it down. You always drop it down 10 degrees so you can remember what the homeowner had it set at. So we always drop it from 75 to 65 to help remember because you're in a lot of homes. You know. So you always move it by 10. 10 up, 10 down, 10 back to the middle. First pass, we're still opening everything up. Uh, we always run hot water the first pass to try to uh, make sure there's hot water on all the fixtures. But then also we'll do cold water on the second pass, make sure there's all cold water, but cold water actually shows up a lot better on the infrared camera than the heat does. One thing Josh is uh, doing here, I, I noticed him doing, making him repeat it to be weird, but uh, <laughs> uh, you always want to pay special attention to this, these uh, glass doors because uh, it's easy to miss cracks and then also check if they're loose. So you always want to use the voltage meters on these 240s. It's, it's not often that you find it, but every now and then you do, you'll find an inoperative 240. We did check the breaker outside. So if you do have an inoperative, just make sure that you go and check the breaker before you just say it's broken. Just always further evaluate, just, just a little bit more. All right, so we're on the first pass. Open the attic door. It's like a heat wave come in at us, you can almost feel the heat. So we're already gonna write up poor ventilation in the attic space. Uh, you can see some daylight showing next to the water heater flue. We got some uh, rodent activity, looks like squirrels. So that ladder that I was talking about the other day, uh, the eight year old little giant ladder, this is it, the little bad boy. I've re I told Josh I would replace it several times, but nope. Yeah. It's my lucky ladder. <laughs> yeah, the lucky ladder. It still works. And uh, if you are looking to get a little giant ladder, uh, you can find it on our tool list, the exact one we use today uh, uh, on homeiw.com. And we actually like getting on these roofs. Uh, we're able to get on this roof, which is nice uh, because they have this balcony here. And uh, we're going to walk up there. It's a flat roof. And we actually get our feet on this roof today, which is nice because it's pretty steep but we can, we'll be able to walk it uh, over here. And uh, another thing too, as you can see, as a, a glove. These roofs get really hot here in Texas, so it's always nice to have a glove to grab onto the roof if, it, if you start slipping or something. We do walk on steep roofs all the time. I did walk up this uh, steep incline here, and these are the boots that I was telling you about earlier. They really do stick to the roof. Like, let's just hope I don't bust my ass <laughs> over here. So. So like a little transition right there so yeah just if you are getting in the home inspection field just get, get used to heights other things we'll write up is the granule loss dam damaged shingles and right here this is an easy spot to determine if this is leaking or not look at all that caulking it's almost guaranteed that this is probably leaking or will leak as soon as that caulking breaks so uh, we're gonna write out prior repair and we have enough on the roof to um, recommend for a roofer anyways to have it further evaluated. It's just getting at that age where maintenance is required. So what Josh is doing over there in the corner, it's a pretty common area where we find termites in those corners. So he's digging around uh, where there's excessive moisture or high soil. So we'll dig around to see if we can pull up any termites out of the soil. 
Also another find is actually right here where the roof line stops and the wall continues. Let me get my laser pointer out. You can see right here. Um, it's required to have kick out flashing now, but when the home was built, it wasn't required, but we ride it up anyways to, cause they're gonna have a roofer come out. Hold on, waited for the helicopter to pass by. So um, we ride it up anyways, cause they're gonna have a roofer to come out that can add it in to help prevent further damage. Cause you can see where this flashing isn't working 100% and it's not terminating to the gutter properly. You can see all this efflorescence on the wall where water continually is to travel and it actually messes with their they're grading here so it's disturbing all the soil in this location so easy upgrade if you have a roofer coming out uh, is it required to do anything technically no but we're just informing the client about the situation so we always like to check wired connections make sure they're nice and and snug or in this case connected at all this would be your bonding wire to the copper water line so obviously not bonded at least at this location Okay, y'all mentioned several times about how you walk close to a property and then you walk further away. Because right up here, you can see, laser pointer, right here. This is the water heater flue about six inches from a soffit area, and that is a bedroom. So whoever was sleeping in that bedroom, they're taking showers, running the dishwasher, whatever, water heater's cranking out, you know, carbon dioxide. It is going to go right in to uh, that bedroom area. So no flu cap on it. I mean, it's underneath the soffit area, but obviously a health and safety issue and then a water leak. You can see where it's pulled loose in that area. And we saw a lot of daylight coming into the attic space. A very important find as a home inspector. And when you're reviewing the report with your client, you definitely would want to stress this issue with them that they would want to repair it before moving into the property. Oh, and if you can really see behind it, I'll try to zoom in. That's actually where the squirrels are getting into the attic. Right there, you got the gap and you have the chewing in that location, you got the hole right into the attic space. It's getting hot, so every panel box, we always remove the cover if we can safely. Uh, a few things on this panel box is uh, you have two different style breakers. So you have Challenger mixed with Cutler Hammer. These Cutler Hammer breakers are designed to work in a Cutler Hammer box, not a Challenger. So that can cause issues with arcing or breakers failing or tripping more often. But actually while I'm, um, what I really want to cover with you is uh, they used it pointed swoop screws, but not even that, but long pointed tip screws in this panel and check this out. You know, that could have been a really bad day for somebody. Uh, it did not arc on us. It, it did not arc on us today, but you know, be really safe whenever you're doing this. Uh, my father, whenever he opened up once, he melted a whole screwdriver. So you gotta think if that's enough energy to melt a screwdriver, what it would do to you if you were touching that metal. So be really safe and careful when you're opening these and only touch the rubber section of your of your panel of your screwdrivers whenever you're operating and opening panel boxes. Oh, uh, one more thing before I go, uh, that one on go to the next item. Uh, that we'll actually leave this cover off and call the listing agents and sellers saying, hey, we didn't put the panel box on panel box back on because it's unsafe because we can't safely screw that box back on without maybe puncturing a wire again and damaging ourselves or the next person that comes to the panel box. So we're gonna leave it off so they can fix it later. So here in the attic, uh, we have a 1994 AC. There, uh, we got air leaks where the tape has fallen off. The secondary drain line is capped off. Uh, you got some damaged insulation which is causing this rust in the pan, and the, you can actually see the condensation drips there. Uh, we got some dark organic growth uh, at the joint to the plenum box, and you can see some rodents have been chewing on the insulation on the drain line. Can you know? I told you that it was probably leaking. I mean, I told you it was leaking over there, but we do just know there's something wrong with the balcony, just the way it's built it doesn't look normal compared to other balconies. And right here, we use uh, the proteometer. Uh, to read through tile. It can read through some tiles, but how, sometimes it, you get like a reflective reading here. You can see 
you know, but you can see it's dry in this location. And as we get closer to the door, it increases, showing you that there is moisture coming through the wall here. We got a really good reading on the infrared camera. It was a different color coming out of the door in this location, but you just want to be careful whenever you're reading tile because if you just get red all the way around, you might just be reading, you know, like something reflective underneath the tile. So, but you can see that we get a dry reading up here and it increases as you get closer to the door, obviously showing that the uh, door is leaking and door and balcony area leaking. All right, let's move on to the next thing. Also, another very common test we do is we like to do shower pan test, especially with tile showers that are even with the tile base and we're upstairs right now. So uh, we will fill it up with this shower pan tester. Uh, my father manufactured these. You can find it at showerpantester.com. You can find those online. If you're an inspector and you want a specialty tool, I do have to buy these full price. You should talk to them about that. Uh, but what we do is we fill it up with about an inch or two of water and then we will pull the plug and uh, we will do moisture readings or infrared scans underneath the sheetrock to see if we get a positive reading of moisture. Okay, one more thing. Uh, you know how I talked about the kick out flashing up there in the corner in this location and you can see the water line rolling down and I was like, oh, you know, it's not that important with brick. Let me show you on the inside. Um, oh, door. Um, it is obviously important because we do have a moisture leak on the inside. So we like to use this tool, this Survey Master by Protimeter. And you can see in this location that we have uh, swollen baseboards all along this area. We caught this with the second pass, actually. It's sad we didn't catch it on the first, but that's why we do everything of, uh, two passes. Second pass is always our more detailed pass. But you can see right here, active, 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 active. All throughout the base, right next to that uh, kick out flashing location. So it's traveling down the wall and resting in this area. Good find by Josh. Last thing I wanted to talk about. So as you can see, as I'm going through an inspection, I'm just saying things as I come up to it. But one thing I never do is I never go over the problems until the very end of the inspection. As you can see, it changes several times. My opinion change, changes several times about where that water's coming from. So most of the time when I'm doing these videos, you're just getting me, pro I'm spitting it out as I'm processing the information. And you can now see that that water has nothing in the wall has nothing to do with the kick out flashing because the water's down low. Then I infrared scanned on the inside of the structure and no water's up high. And there's no water up high down the wall so I could see where it's traveling. I'm like, man, where's that coming from? Where's the water coming from? And thankfully it just started raining and then you could see where the gutters split up there and water's just pouring down the side of the wall. And then at the end, it probably finds a penetration point and gets right into the siding right there. So good thing it rained but I think I would have eventually came up with that solution. It just took me longer than I like. Uh, but really good find by Josh and uh, uh, the water penetration in the wall and good thing it rained so I could uh, finish telling the story. So um, that's it, let's go on to the next one. Okay, I'm gonna wrap the video up there. Please make sure that you hit the like and subscribe button. That is the best way to grow the channel. You get more traction and then also Catch us on the next video. I'm gonna to try to do the videos once a week still. I got two vacations coming up uh, with the family. And then after that, we should have the podcast up and rolling again. So uh, that being said, catch us on the next one. See you guys, bye.